It's story time, fellas. So, after making the previous video on this Optiplex GX110, one of my most beloved computers, I got to thinking, and I had mentioned in that video that this computer had not been connected to the internet in several years, and so, of course, you know, I'm bored at the moment, so I decided to try and see if I could get it to work again. Now, this proved to be a little bit more difficult than I anticipated, and I'll get into why right now. So, originally, I, back in the day, I used, of course, a wired connection, but besides that, since I had to remove the Ethernet card to put that NVIDIA GPU in it, I figured it would be simpler to try and start with a wireless connection. So, this is the wireless card that I had back in the day. This is a Belkin, uh, you know, USB adapter. I was tr just trying to do this as a proof of concept, so I didn't really care about the speed. I figured this was, you know, not very fast because it was old, and so I tried this, plugged it in, didn't work and the reason for that is this is a wireless B 11 megabit adapter and you know I don't run a B network around here and even if I did the drivers that I had installed on this computer for it were not functional and so I plugged this in tried to get it to work it did not work so at that point I was like okay I'm gonna try a more modern adapter now I have this Netgear N300 Thank you, Windows. Very cool. I had this Netgear wireless adapter. This thing is from about 2012. I've had success using this on older computers in the past. Had this laying around, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try this. This ended up not working either. Now, this computer, of course, as I mentioned in the previous video, this thing runs Windows XP Professional Service Pack 1 and originally ran RTM back in the day when I used it as a primary. And the reason for that is Windows XP Service Pack 2 and 3 just really struggle on this machine. You know, it's a Pentium 3, it only has 256 megs of RAM, supports 512, but I don't have any more RAM to put in it. And so, with that said, the computer struggles to run anything newer than Windows XP Service Pack 1. Service, Service Pack 1, on the other hand, runs pretty well, you know, given the age of the computer. And so, I tried to make this work with that, but like I said, Windows XP Service Pack 1 is nowhere near as stable as the later versions. And so, anyways, I downloaded the drivers for this thing, plugged the USB flash drive into it, tried to get it to install, but every time I tried to install it, it would just hang halfway through the installer and Windows XP would just kind of flip its shit. And so, no matter how many times I tried this, yeah, I could not get the drivers to install properly. The little uh, dialog box on the <clears throat> corner would say, you know, this device was not installed properly, it might not work, blah, blah, blah. And of course it didn't work. <laughs> I actually had to use the command line and the registry editor to go ahead and uninstall the driver because again, it would, it would hang sh halfway through the uh, installation or uninstallation process. It would also flash a bunch of dialog boxes and it, it just hosed the computer. So anyways, I had to go into the command line and the registry editor to get rid of that. And so at this point, I was like, okay, I've kind of exhausted all of my wireless options. So I was like, all right, you know what? We're going to try to get the Ethernet to work again. Now, I had mentioned in the previous video that I removed this D-Link uh, gigabit Ethernet card because I needed room to fit that NVIDIA GPU in here. Now, I originally thought that the reason I put this in here over a decade ago was because this is gigabit and the one on in the computer is 10100. I figured that was that was the technical reason for me doing this, but I later found out that this was not the case. So I tried going into the BIOS, I re-enabled the built-in 3Com 10100 Ethernet adapter and I tried to use it. I ran a Ethernet cable from my switch, which is behind the custom build here, and I could not get it to connect. No matter what I did, the computer, I would plug the cable in and I wouldn't get any access lights on the back, and <clears throat> the software complained that the network cable was unplugged. So anyways, I spent about 10-15 minutes trying to, you know, mess with this, and I found out that when I wiggle the cable, if I wiggle it a certain direction, I could get it to connect for a second. And so, of course, I unplugged the cable, discovered that two of the eight pins on the Ethernet port were bent down, and so very carefully I got a very tiny eyeglass screwdriver, stuck a flashlight in there, and tried to bend them back up. And of course that worked perfectly. So now this thing, <clears throat> of course it's only 10100 like I said, but again I'm doing this as a proof of concept. Anyways, long story short, I finally got the internet to work on this thing. Sorry that took five minutes of explaining, but I'm bored and so this is what we do. Anyways, with that said, now it works. We have an internet connection, and I'll go ahead and show it to you real quick.
All right, so since this computer is far too old for a screen recorder, this is gonna have to be good enough. So if you go into our device manager here, we can see that we now have a network adapter, this 3Com integrated network adapter here. So it's working. Of course, I had to re-enable it in the software because I had disabled it back in the day when I put the gigabit one in. But uh, now that that's working, I plugged the ethernet cable in, went into the network connections thing, and just made sure that we had a working network connection. And as you can see, it was working. Only at 100 megabits, but again, proof of concept. So with that done, I decided to try and launch Firefox and we can do that right now. Now the thing is, is I had Firefox 3.6 on here, which is from about 2010. So with that in mind, the most websites were absolutely broken just because the SSL certificates and stuff were uh, expired for that web browser. It was just so old, didn't support you know newer web technologies, wouldn't work at all. So anyways, the latest version of Firefox that I could throw on here, being XP Service Pack 1, was Firefox 12. And that came out in about 2012. And this seems to work a little bit better. We don't get the old school Google, <laughs> which is something that I noticed in 3.6. And some websites actually do work. So without further ado, let me go ahead and demonstrate this. Google, of course, works fine because they have to remain backwards compatible with a lot of computers. But I can go ahead and load Reddit which I found is probably the best site I've tried yet that still works on this thing. Now, with that said, it's gonna try and load the new version, which, <laughs> as you can see, does not work at all. But if we click this button up here to go to uh, old Reddit, it seems to work. Now, of course, again, this is a Pentium 3, 20 year old computer, it's not gonna be fast whatsoever. However, once you actually do load the page, this uh, Reddit being an older website with not a lot of content, um, it does seem to work just fine. Now. Of course, it does take a bit. You gotta wait for it to load and whatnot. But once it does, like I said, it's actually more usable than I would have ever thought that this thing could be. So if we go ahead and scroll down here, again, you can read these, read these articles. Let me go ahead and uh, try to load one of these. And if you give it enough time, it does work. <laughs> so other sites like not Reddit. Um, I know Wikipedia does not work at all. Let me go ahead and see if I can try to type that in real quick. If I try to load Wikipedia, it complains that the SSL uh, encryption algorithm is not synced. Of course, you know, this browser is so old that I guess Wikipedia has dropped support for these older um, SSL certificates and whatnot. And then also if we go into, so if we go into encryption, view certificates, you can see that a lot of these uh, SSL certificates expired, you know, five to ten years ago, so that is why a lot of this stuff doesn't work. So, I'm not sure of any way to actually update those, and so, again, the web is kind of broken here. Other sites, I'll, I'll give you one more. Let's go to YouTube, which this is going to be ugly, <laughs> because, of course, YouTube is a very content-driven website, and so it's, it's not really going to work all that well. But that was actually faster than I anticipated it being, to be honest, but... Again, I don't think this thing will ever play a YouTube video again, it's just too slow, but the website does load. And those are really the only kind of sites that I tried. Uh, the only other website I know of that is stuck in the 90s would be Acme. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that, that one works fine because, again, this, la this website is from like 1996. So of course, websites like this that are stuck in the past work perfectly fine, but the web is, for the most part, pretty broken on this thing. But you know what? I spent two hours trying to set this up and I don't regret doing it because this thing can actually still browse the internet, kind of. Now, would you ever want to use it? No, absolutely not. But as a proof of concept for being such an old computer, I think that's really cool. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.